welcome dudes, the water, the ocean, and the beach are like totally awesome. Oh yeah dude, what more can a dude want than gnarly waves and some good vibes? Get your surfboards ready for a movie that has surfing related stuff, but it's not surf's up type, so sorry Cody. Better luck next time, dude. And dude, I can't talk like dude like this dude for like long, cause it's like breaking my brain how anyone can find it funny, enduring or attractive when somebody permanently speaks like they think they are smart. They're not. The weird part is that it works because people can't tell the difference between innocence and ignorance. <sighs> By that, I mean you can be found innocent in court without being ignorant, but people that are innocent in life are always just ignorant. Anyway, the movie started off with a background story akin to Hercules' intro, giving the expedition of Tefiti, the mother of creation. She made some islands and immediately went back to sleep. She probably thought, oh no, it'll be fine. Just leave my green heart exposed to actual monsters roaming outside that also reside in the world. So obviously the biggest monster of them all, male lead, was the first of just being ignorant of two things. One being the heart he still needed to stay in the socket of the mountains or a terrible darkness will be unleashed upon the planet. Uh, and the second was that the mountain was the mother of creation herself. It then cuts to Moana with an introduction to the female lead who was not a normal child. Things that should scare her, well, it just doesn't. And it was evident she wasn't just stupidly brave, but she was also adventurous, caring, and a wannabe hero, I guess. Not like she has a choice, being the chosen one. Chosen by the ocean, which isn't logical, so it makes me think that the ocean was akin more to a natural force of destiny, more so than anything else. It is also trying to give the important green heart of the goddess to a baby, really. I mean, yeah, why not? Let's just shove the responsibility of saving the world on the shoulders of a toddler. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Hey, hey, an immortal animal companion was the only animal companion that matters as the other one. Hold on, let me check what its name is again. Poa the pig, right. So, flower the pig after the 20 minute mark was never seen from or heard from again but let's carry on as mohana tries and tries and tries again to go on adventure but her parents has to keep reminding her that she has duties and responsibilities on the island destiny seemed to throw a lot on mohana when she wanted to explore and be free thankfully she also cherished family and enjoyed doing her work in the tribe. So she had no problems doing her duties. Holy shit. He has like a unicorn personality. I've only ever read and heard about people like this. Moana the unicorn was also skilled in just about everything and um, very close to a Mary Sue, but not quite, as she has yet to learn how to sail, which was no fault of her own, as she was just prohibited from using the boats. And I've seen this type of scenario play out in real life. You know, the father's overprotective nature that inadvertently cause more harm than good. In this case, her inability to sail, which we only realize later. But for now, the village has no fish and they need more to survive. So this new problem, the chief's daughter decided that she would tackle head on. <laughs> Anyway, right after Moana's grandmother showed Moana their tribe's legacy and history as seafarers, she immediately died. The story narrative, very tense, then condenses into an explosion of emotion and a renewal of determination 
where Mahoana was determined to save her people and her father to keep her safe, which he failed at because he didn't go with her or send anyone to help her or organized an expedition to go after her. Uh, but what do I know? I don't even have kids. Moana grabbed the green heart and set off with great courage and zero wayfaring skills for a destined adventure that kept on calling to her. All she knew was that the green heart was the key to success and that she needed help from a certain demigod. And oh, how lucky. She had Hey Hey to keep her company in the middle of the ocean. The group, not quite complete, journeyed towards the upside-down hook in the sky. With Mohana not knowing what she was doing, got caught off guard when she started dozing off on the job. And the first thing she does is ask the ocean for help. I get a little help? Please? The response I usually get. And then my response in turn. And as luck would have it, Ocean did sort of indeed take her to where she needed to go. The movie then reintroduces the antagonistic male protagonist who at first glance seemed like he was trying to trick or get rid of Moana. Uh, which, yes he did, but like her father, he was doing it trying to protect her. Obviously, he didn't know that she was Neo, the chosen one, just yet. So, please don't hate the guy. While trying to steal her boat, he soon realized that he doesn't have a choice in the matter and will need to either accept the quest to put back the heart or forever be haunted by the ocean and Moana continuously nagging him to do what they want him to do without ever trying to ask him in a polite manner, just demanding, demanding, demanding. Although Maui thought the green rock was the cause of him being marooned on the island and thought was cursed in some way. So when Mahana asked him to take it back, yeah, then we got to see a back and forth of why children cannot be trusted with fire, the Kakamura being a prime example. Moana, at the same time, got to see firsthand how a real seafarer does it as they make their grand escape. Then they made a deal. Maui will take back the heart, and in return, he will be praised as a hero of the people once more. Also, the ocean forced him how to teach Moana how to sail, because again, you know, Asking nicely just isn't an option. Anyways, doesn't matter as they arrive at their next destination, Lalutai, the realm of monsters, and there they reveal their shortcomings. My people oh, didn't send me. The ocean did. Really? You're what? Eight? Can't sail? Obvious choice. After a few more good jokes, Moana and Maui search for Tamatoa who had Maui's magical hook, okay. a hook that can turn him into different types of animals and creatures, a hook that doesn't work unless the plot wants it to. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Tamatoa was a fun and difficult antagonist for the two leads to go head to head with. That's my grandma's. I ate my grandma and it took a week because she was absolutely humongous. Why are you here? <laughs> So they formulated a plan that totally worked. Yep, first try even. Anyway, with a little ingenuity on Moana's part, they are out of there. Then Maui had some sort of breakdown or some sort of midlife crisis or something, I don't know. He definitely wasn't feeling like himself. And no worries, as after a nice moral boosting pep talk, on who will be a hero soon, Moana saves the day, I guess. Well, 
No, not quite good enough. When Maui fought the lava monster, he was not good enough to defeat. And I'm gonna keep the max part short because it's like the movie's just repeating itself. Basically, he broke his hook. Moana tried to consolidate with him, but no avail, and they split up. Moana then talked to Grandma Ghost, who said to her that she must choose what the ocean forced on her. Because, well, you know, she's already in the middle of the ocean. And what's the point of going back to the island when eventually it will be corrupted by a black plague with everyone dying from it? I mean, sure, she could have just left everyone in the world to its fate, but then she would also just be dooming herself. So, yeah. Fun times. Anyway, she decided again to try to get past the lava monster. Why? Well, she wanted to reach the mountain where there's a socket that needed to be filled by a pebble-shaped green heart that may or may not grant people special power. Because, well, they never really disclosed that. Maui was back with no explanation as to how he stopped being a drama queen. No, I'm just joking. And I would also be pissed off if my most treasured and only possession got destroyed while trying to help someone. Albeit for a selfish reason, doesn't matter. Because it was good to see them work together for the finale of the movie. Speaking of which, surprise or not, the lava monster was Tefiti, the mother of creation, all along just trying to retrieve her pebble-shaped heart. Now, I know what you're wondering. Why was her heart so tiny? Because that was never really explained. And why did the male and female lead not hook up at the end? I don't know, but I'm really glad they didn't. Did the movie end happily ever after? Uh, um, doesn't it always? Why ask so many questions? Well, because I felt like it, okay? Now tell me, where are the others? Eat me! Thanks. You didn't slay the dragon? It's on my to-do list. Now come on. What was that? I don't think he's on the ship anymore. Confirmed. He's taken a police cruiser. Yeah. He took the red one. <laughs> Control 